What's going on, guys? It is Friday, so of course that means one thing. It is time for Last Call. That's right, this is the video where we're giving you our picks for books that are hitting final order cutoff this coming Monday night. And there's some great ones, aren't there, Jack? There are. There's definitely some big ones we're going to be talking about. Hitting a lot of different uh, variety of releases this week, for sure. And there are two books coming out, um, hitting FOC this week, that made the recent New York Times top 10 uh, comics to look for in the fall of 2020. Uh, so definitely some big releases this week. Yeah, we're going to get to it starting right now with a big one from Marvel. We got that Shang-Chi number one. This one's going to have a bunch of great covers for it. My favorite, I think, is probably that one in 50, Jim Bartel. But you have some monster artists with some monster covers for this. Yeah, a lot of variants. Uh, definitely a big release from Marvel. Um, you're going to see a lot of retailer exclusives. At the same point, um, I am cautious about this one. Uh, certainly, from an investment standpoint, I would say this is probably not going to be one to pay attention to because uh, we've seen this is, is publishing going along with the movies, right? So we've got the movie coming, so they've got to get some publishing out there. Uh, because the, the truth is, the average Marvel fan isn't really familiar with the character yet. So you got to try to get uh, Marvel fans more familiar with characters. We saw this with Guardians of the Galaxy. We saw this previously. Having said that, this is one of the two series that I mentioned. The New York Times recently did a highlight as one of the top 10 series to pay attention to in the fall. So it, there will be added eyes. It certainly could garner arena buzz. Uh, it's one to pay attention to. But this is one I'm going to like cautiously check out as a reader, and then if I see something I like, maybe go harder. Yeah, like I said, there's so many covers. I like to pick the one I like, and I'll be picking that up. And hopefully that's the Jim Bartel, but that's why we have the FOC show, so you can get those pre-orders in now. Yes. But here's one that is not a stranger to anyone, and it's kind of funny because we're talking about Strange Academy. That's right. We got issue number three heading final order cutoff. That's right. And I think we got to just keep talking Strange Academy. Um, the buzz is building. And I got to be honest with you, Brian, I'm a believer on this. Um, I know that you and I tend to be kind of the old men of comics, right? We're, we we joke that sometimes we can be like the, uh, the old men in the balcony on the Muppets. Uh, and uh, at the same point, uh, this is one where I see the momentum building. We just talked on 3 Up, 3 Down about how everyone in comics is looking for that Harry Potter. Um, and you're not going to get Harry Potter because J.K. Rowling just will not let it happen. I feel like Strange Academy is your closest opportunity. On top of it, um, you're getting serious reader buzz. People are enjoying the series. And then the fact that it plays into what could happen in the movies with a multi-platform program that Disney's going to be rolling out where you've got Disney Plus, plus the movies. Um, you've got a lot of different avenues where you could release Strange Academy. And Benedict Cumberbatch, this could be a great role for him because as he ages out of Doctor Strange to the point that maybe he's too old to play the character, he can be like headmaster or something like that with Strange Academy and kind of always have that role um, and be like less in an action-packed environment. So I like this. This is something that um, I, I'm very bullish on long-term. So I'm picking up all these issues and I'm picking up all these late printings. And stay tuned because we're going to be talking about Strange Academy late printings later. Here we're going from Marvel into DC with that Batman Joker War, but we got Batman Joker War Zone number one. I love a lot of things about this. I love the covers. You got a Ben Oliver cover, you got Derek Chu cover, but then you have great writers in James Tynan as well as Joshua Williamson. Great writers, great artists. It's going to make a great story. So I'm definitely picking this one up for FOC. Yeah, this is a no brainer. Um, you know, you, like you mentioned, uh, the cover art alone has been popping all over Instagram. One of those rare situations where it's not like cover B dominant, although cover B is getting a lot of attention, cover A is also an amazing, gorgeous cover. So this is definitely a two-cover pickup for me. And then again, from a reader standpoint, as you mentioned, I'm picking up everything Joker War, so I gotta have this. This is one that, you know, while it may not be a 20 copies from of each cover type pickup, you guys are gonna want to get this one in before FOC. Make sure you get your copy when you're not chasing this one on these day. We're getting back over to those Power Rangers with Mighty Morphin Power Rangers number 55. This looks to be a pretty big issue, right? That's right, because it is the final issue. Um, 
This is the last issue in this run that has started back with issue zero with Kyle Higgins. Uh, big time hits really changed the game for Power Ranger Comics and for Boom Studios. So this is a big one. A lot of rumors going out. One of the least uh, kept secrets is the fact that there is a impending first appearance that it looks to be a new Green Ranger coming in this issue. And that has been going around and has people excited. Uh, certainly a new Green Ranger is going to get people buzzing. So we've seen that happen before with Power Rangers where when things happen, issues come on short supply. So this is one to pay attention to definitely for FOC, um, especially if you're interested in those incentives, you might want to lock that one in because after this, we are going into the new series, Mighty Morphin and Power Rangers, two series spawning out of one. Um, so that's definitely one to pay attention to. Sticking with Boom Studios and sticking with that Power Ranger universe, we are getting Power Rangers Draken New Dawn number three. This is the last issue in this mini series, right? That's right. So many questions left unanswered. Who is the man in the iron mask in the tower? What is going to happen to Ranger Slayer as Draken going forward as we head into, as we mentioned, two brand new Power Ranger series from Boom Studios? So this is another great issue, just like 55, wrapping up a lot of stories. Um, definitely ones people are going to be paying attention to. Yeah, and you know we had exclusive variants for issue number one and issue number two. So it's only right that we have an exclusive variant coming with Partners, 616 Comics, Simple Man's Comics. We have that great artist from that first issue, Steve Morris, doing an issue for number three. But that's not all, right, Jack? No, no, no. We're excited to have Steve Morris doing issue number three, but he's not the only artist from the growing Simple Men's Comics 616 Comics roster of artists to come back to do another cover because we're bringing you a brand new Jung Young Yoon issue number 55 of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers variant. We are excited to unveil these variants, but unfortunately we cannot show them yet. So stay tuned to Burke's Family 54 Comics. If you are not subscribed to Steve over there, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to their channel. Um, they are going to be dropping those exclusive announcements and those exclusive cover unveilings, letting you know when these books go on sale. So make sure you're subscribed and you got that bell notification click so you can be the first to find out. And that's going to lead us to that indie showcase portion of this show. Each week, this section is brought to you by Black Cape Comics at blackcapecomics.com. All the comics we talk about in this video, you can pre-order from there. But we always showcase that indie, which is what Black Cape specializes in. And for this week, we get that monster book from Image Comics with that Department of Truth number one. It's got a pretty big writer behind this, right? That's right. Of course, we are talking about James Tynion himself. Um, this guy at this point is as hot as they can be. Something's killing children with boom. Batman going through the Joker war. Um, and now coming to Image Comics with Department of Truth. If you love conspiracy theories, and we know the comic book community does, uh, you're going to love this book. We've checked out issue number one. Amazing. Um, it's not, that is not a hard sell. This is a great series, and everybody who seems to check it out seems to think so. So this is going to be one to pay attention to. And on top of it, there are some major incentive variants to be on the lookout for. That one in 100 um, uh, something's killing the children homage is definitely definitely going to get people's attention but on top of that you've got heavyweight cover artists doing the one in 25 and the one in 50 and not only that but we love this book so much we had to do an exclusive for this one as well and we have a pretty good artist for this cover right that's right and that's why you're going to want to follow two brothers comments on youtube who dropped that exclusive announcement that we are gonna have a variant for Department of Truth number one from none other than Megan Hutchinson, the queen of comics, uh, who's got this amazing virgin cover uh, that we're gonna be selling this Tuesday. And that's at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time this upcoming Tuesday uh, at simplementscomics.com as well as the 616comics.com. So that's right, guys. Department of Truth number one is our indie showcase book this week presented by Black Cape Comics again. All the books we talk about you can get from Black Cape Comics. And they have a bunch of great exclusives themselves, as well as some fantastic prints. Make sure you guys check out BlackCapeComics.com. But like we always do, we want to tell you about those later printings that are coming out, right? That's right, Brian. No longer an afterthought, just coming at the end of the show. This is one of the most important sections 
of this show because these late printings have been on fire on the secondary market. And this week, we've got some great ones. We've got Ice Cream Man number 20 coming with a third print and a brand new Dr. Seuss homage. You're going to want to pay attention to that one. Ink Blot number one coming with a second print from Image Comics. We've got Crow Lathe number one, number two, and number three all hitting second print with those Peach Romoco covers. We've got Strange Academy number one hitting a fourth print. That's definitely one to pay attention to and be on the lookout for. First appearances are plenty, and we know what those late printings do over time. And win number one, speaking of James Tynan, another big time series of his from Boom Studios is going to a third print, so be on the lookout for that. So there's the initial printings plus our picks and that ND showcase. Make sure you get those orders in before Monday night. Also remember DC's foc is a day earlier so make sure you get those orders in and with that being said guys this is brian and jack with superman's comics we will see you in the next video